This is Vincent Curie. I'm in my recording studio where I keep my machines and I'm going to give a demonstration on a, a very popular embroidery only machine uh, which is the Brother PE770 which is right over here. Now there's a couple of um, issues that uh, I'm aware of that surfaced. Uh, I did help a couple of my subscribers um, get their machines working. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to show today, we're going to start with the with the problem that I had three 770s. And I uh, currently have the the big sister to it, the uh, Innovis 2800D, which is over here. Now, you know, that's a embroidery and sewing machine, and it's uh, quite expensive. It has a, a color display. Getting back to the issue at hand. Yeah. All right, one of the things I'm going to show on this video is um, a problem that happens with these machines. And uh, the first time it happens, it, for better words, it, freak, it freaks you out. And uh, the auto threader which which you see here under under here uh, it's made up of three parts like a little dog bone and these these are relatively small uh, I would say this is an inch this this metal thing everything say about an inch you got this mechanism this little little pin over here That goes through the eye of the needle. And um, right here, in this hole, when this piece is pushed and this, this dog bone moves like this, and this moves like this, this is assembled. And this is the way you would put it back into the machine. And then the shaft uh, has a, a pin going through the shaft that it goes into if you want to call it a wing wing slot and and the shaft comes down into here through here and then of course it's going through here through there and then out the bottom and it sticks its nose out a little bit you know and the first one I had that fell off uh, I found out by laying it out putting it together and uh, how it went because I had three three little parts uh, so um, it's just a press fit this hole is a press fit on the shaft so what I do is uh, and you could do it when you start when you start using the machine you just put your finger under the mechanism and just push up a little bit just push up right there Good, because when this works, it snaps. All right. Uh, the other problem, the other problem I've been contacted with uh, is upper thread breaking. And uh, uh, what what I do is I run the spools. If you're using this kind of spool, brother supplies this. Uh, when I first got the machine, the thread was getting caught in the uh, the spool pin that goes through here. You know, the spool pin goes through, and the thread was getting caught in here as it was unwinding. Uh, this had to be relatively tight, like this. So 
so you don't have a little, little bit of a gap like this. But it still has you changing thread because sometimes you got 12 thread changes. You, uh, I've done embroidery where there was 40 thread changes, believe it or not. So uh, the lady where Lisa, where I buy my machines, uh, I miss the vac and Mrs. So dot com. Uh, she said, don't use the Dawn thing. She says it just gets in the way when you're using our thread. The spool that I showed them, that's Polystar. That's the one that they recommend. It's a polyester. Here's another thread. Another thread, uh, of course, uh, you know, the famous Sulky. This is a rayon. Now, when I use these, I do put the plastic cap on. And I, I find I don't have any particular problem. All right, now, here's the other problem. The upper thread breaking if you do all the regular things you change the needle you make sure that your thread uh, is feeding well and when I say feeding well when the presser foot is up like it is see now it's down this is up uh, the washers that the thread runs through the tension washers are open with the presser foot up on the, every machine so when you pull the thread through the needle you know, it, it comes off nice and you can see it coming off the spool and everything's flowing nice. You can feel it, what's normal. All right, now, if you feel snags and then you reach on the top of the machine and you pull it back, you pull it through the needle, sort of doing this thing, and if you feel it tight and you press a foot is up and you have another issue. Now, here is a resolution. Now you gotta watch this closely. This I call a bull nose, right here. Now there's one screw, in fact I got it loose right now. Uh, it's about a half inch long. You just have to take it loose enough. Now, the next thing is this unit comes right off. Now, usually when you take something off, uh, go slow and peek, be, peek behind it, right? Now I'm gonna show you what's, what's inside. Now you could just put this on the side and forget about it until you find to put it back. But I wanna show you some of the important things. Uh, here I marked, right here, that the silver peg goes in this hole, right? So, silver peg, where are you? So here, here is a silver peg. Right here. Now this is just a peg. There's nothing. Uh, now, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn this. You see how easy that come off? Now, hey, look at this. Bird's eye view. Behind the scenes, that's your uh, auto threader, and that's a, uh, a mechanism that uh, holds holds on onto. Uh, I'm going to show you. I move my machine a little bit. I'm, uh, I mean, not I mean the machine. And then I'll turn this a bit also for now. Okay, here we go. So now, now we're on this side here. Now you auto threader. This part of the auto threader right here, hook to this. That goes right here like this. See? Right? Now, it's a good idea every so often. The one screw, and you get in there with a little brush. And what what I found, if the machine's in, in use for a while. I'm trying to find my tweezers here. Uh, the machine's in use for a while, and it could only be for three or four days, especially if you get thread hung up. Uh, there is uh, there is a mechanism in here, and when you turn 
the uh, when the machine turns the mechanism you could see it I'll zoom in a bit and I'll show you that mechanism okay you look in here right there and this is a mechanism okay and uh, what that does is as you putting the thread in as you're threading the machine uh, the thread goes through that mechanism now here's another another little little deal uh, you could get you could get in there with uh, uh, with the pair of pliers right in here I don't mean pliers uh, a tweezer and you could pull the lint out that gets stuck Get stuck in there. You can see there's even some now. See, look, look the, the tweezers hanging off it. All right. Now here's another thing you can do. You see this screw here? You see this thing right here? This part. I'm not sure what that is. <clears throat> All right. This as you as you're threading it, and when you do that, you you come into uh, you come into one, two, around, down, three. Let me go a little more. I want to show you the numbers as I'm working. All right, three. And you come up then over now when you come over and then you come down um, there is a take-up arm and I'm going to show you that take-up arm there's a take-up arm that the thread goes into so so let me let me show you that okay now what you could do is uh, let me back up. Okay, right, right in the front of the machine, where my hand is, right here. There's a lever. All right, I'm pulling the lever, and this comes right off. Okay, that's out, out of the way. So now you have uh, uh, open open space over here. So let's you you got this screw here. Now you could hold the machine a little bit, put a little pressure. Oh, I, I need a bigger screw jack. Look at this. I just nobody move. Okay, we're back. Okay, there's a there's the screw right here. Right there, there's a screw. All right now, there's actually two screws. There's one above it. Okay, you can loosen the screw. Now, that screw you got to remove. So you get you get to a certain point. And what you could do, if you want, you could uh, you could grab that. You can you could sort of back it up with your little pliers, and just keep in mind that there's a washer on it. All right, there's a washer. All right, so I got it there. Okay. All right. Now, above it, above it, there's another screw. Okay. See, I just loosen that one. All right. And this thing, this thing uh, backs away. So that screw you could leave in. Now here's. Here's what I was talking about right 
here. And your, your thread goes in that little notch. As you bring the thread around, it goes in that little notch up there. And uh, uh, all of this could catch lint. So uh, you could you could take as much as the lint out that, that you can get at over there. Easier, like this. Now, uh, a lady told me today that I sent her uh, photographs of doing this and she said that there was a, a, a ball a ball of uh, colored thread behind the sensor now uh, there's there's one sensor right here she says it was behind a sensor and uh, uh, she might have meant this over here but you look where thread could be caught and and you take the thread out now now just say you clean this you got this clean and that again is the take up arm I call that a take up arm okay right? you got the thread out so now you put this back to where it was uh, the uh, the top screw you snug okay you snug it so it stays like that now you could with the with the with the tweezers put this back. The other thing you can do if you want, you know, this is all uh, an old uh if you want to call it a mechanics trick, but uh he, here's another thing you can do. You could take you could take a, a small screwdriver to get to get started with, you know, something maybe this this size right here. And then you put your little screw there. Right? And you, you you put some you put some tape on it. You don't need much. You just have to have to uh, put the put the tape on so that the tape holds the screw like this. Right? All you want to do is have the screw held so that when you put it in the hole. You could push it and get it and get it going one or one or two turns, so you're able to take the screwdriver out, right? So I got the the screw in there. Okay, and I got the tape off. Now, then that screw, you you tighten, you jiggle this. Always good when you tighten the screws. You you jiggle the thing; it aligns it. Jiggle it. Make sure this is aligned. Right. And you you align the screwdriver up so that it's in line with with the screw that's going into the into the thread portion. And you just snug it. You snug it. When you snug something, you concentrate on that I'm snugging it. You concentrate. Not not that you're just putting it until the screwdriver slips. All right, that's snugged. Now, here's the other thing. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rotate this. Or I'm going to bring my needle up. Okay, my needle's up out, out of the, uh, the presser foot. Now, let me lower this and let me explain. A lady told me she was trying to explain. Now, she didn't get back to me that it worked. I was assuming she was talking about, she says, I watch all your videos and, you know, she went out and bought the machine. I'm assuming she's talking about this machine. All right, now she says that the press of foot was to the right of the needle. To the right of the needle. So, first thing I did was I come down here. Oh no, I'm sorry. I come up. I'm upstairs. I come up, and and I. I, 
I took my uh, I took my screwdriver and I loosened the screw that holds the presser foot right on on the presser the presser foot shaft and with the screw loose of course you could angle this out of the way so it's out of alignment you know but you know that sort of uh, I wouldn't call it far-fetched but I think the lady would have uh, looked at the screw because if you have sewing machines usually you take the screw off to change the presser feet so that's sort of a common thing it's common I would say as replacing a needle Alright, and uh, you can see a view there of uh, of the uh, auto auto threader mechanism. You know, so like I said, every so often. Uh, now, in the plastic, right in the plastic, up here. Not this, I'm going to talk about this. This right here is another picture. This is, I call it a knobule. It's round like a doorknob. Now, the purpose of that, uh, in this plastic part, right in line with this, there's a groove built into it. And just like a keyhole, that knob fits into a hole. When you're mounting it up fits into this hole so now the knobs up in the hole which is sort of a shaft or a groove so as you're doing this the knob rides back and forth in that little shaft thing the shaft that's in the plastic the groove that's in the plastic so that's where that goes and that helps make this mechanism flick out Alright, so now, uh, the lady said that this was out to the right of the needle. The hole in here was to the right of the needle. So, she says, does the shaft turn? Alright, so I, being that my machines are relatively new, I come upstairs right, to, to my laboratory. And... Uh, just move this up a bit. Okay. All right, now. All right, here. It, uh, moving up and down the depressor foot. All right, now, there, there's a hole here. There's a hole on this side of the machine. Right here, and you see, right here, you see the uh, Allen key moving. All right, uh, you bring the presser foot up, and you see the block. You see that block it goes up and down. That block has an Allen head. Uh, lock screw in it and to get to it you um, you go in that hole you bring this to the up position and then you you align the uh, uh, the key that goes into the Allen now the um, key that I'm using this is 330 seconds it's a little too small it's a little too small so but I was able to duplicate the lady's problem. I did loosen this, cracked it loose, and then, um, let me lower the camera. All right, I loosened that set screw, and lo and behold, this just went back and forth like this. Now, you could loosen the set screw and this would drop down. So, to put it back where it belongs, you could bring 
you needle down. Now your needle should be straight. Should be a straight needle, right? So you pay to change that. And uh, you push with the set screw a little loose. You push this up. You know, you jiggle it if it's out of position. Bring it up, and then you align this so that it's the 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 distance in the uh, the press of foot has sort of like a keyhole slot and then it's round either round hole like keyhole and then it sort of elongated so the needle should be symmetrically placed in the middle the middle of this this hole this hole now now these presser foots they don't they don't go down and touch the presser uh the uh, needle plate it the presser foot goes down and it, it's on of course on the uh the hoop, you know, this embroidery machine. All right, so this up here, you you make sure it's tight after you align this down here. You, this should be uh, aligned also, so so this is parallel to this. That's important, and then and then you tighten this. Don't break it. Tighten it. All right, so now you can put this back. This pin goes in right here. This aligns. Um, it aligns to the right side of this black. Uh, block here to the right side and then and then this you guide it into the area on the top and then you make sure your washes you got two wash there you make sure they're back and the reason is is because you you're putting this uh, in front of the washes so all of that should be lined up as you're putting this back together. You align everything. Now, ordinarily, I I put my my head behind the that area there. See, it went right on. If I, I'm I'm sitting in front of it. And I did it because I'm concentrating on this, right? And uh, so the screw now is. In where it belongs, as you can see, and, and then uh, and then I'm going to tighten the screw. And all these screws you don't do not have to over tighten. You know, just make sure your screwdriver is is uh, parallel. Not like this. Not like you know. Not like this. Just you you look and you concentrate. And you know you you make good contact and you bring it in. Jiggle this so make sure it's in, bring it together like this. Alright. You can feel it now it's starting to snug up. And you don't go nuts with it because you know you got a plastic deal. It's just just snug it. Okay. So now the other thing I could do, I could put I could, I could put this back. See? And uh, on this end, you could see it has plug. It has circuitry because, being that it uses, uh, it has servos in here, different servos, and and then here, here's the lever I was saying, I was telling you about, and you can see what that does. Okay. Sure, there's no dust, no metal, no beer cans. There's nothing left there. And this goes in. It's going to click when it gets into the right, right spot. Hear it? I did. All right. On that note, uh, good product. I use this a lot.
Another good product I recommend. Dritz uh, Long Arm 3700. What I like about this is that it's strong. Huh? Not like the other tweezers where you gotta squeeze and as you're trying to tighten something, uh, uh, the metal's bending. Like, you know, like, uh, yeah, piece of junk, right? This, this is junk. All right, so now, bring this. It's always good to pick the machine up by the handle. You don't ever want to pick a machine up like this, ever. Alright, put it up by the handle, close your cover. If you want to support it, support it here. Bring it around nice, nicely, smartly. Alright, um, let me uh, turn my power on. Power came on. For the heck of it. Um, and I'm just going to try to align um, touch this it says press the needle position button to rise the needle raise the excuse me and I press the foot down Press the needle position button right here. Okay. Raise, press a foot. All right. The carriage and the unit will move. Okay. Yes. Which that means is your hand isn't laying there. And that it would align your hoop to right in the center of the needle. The hoop will be in the center of the needle. Okay, so uh, I think I covered uh, the various things that I wanted to cover. The uh, let's put put a little thread in there just to see if the uh, all right. that's the way I use it, just like this. All right now, one. Over, down, bring pressure foots up, okay, up three, up to three, over four, down to five. Now six is the bar above the needle, if you want to call it a needle bar. Push, pull the thread to the left. Now, we go closer. I'm going to move to the left a little bit. Okay, now, thread goes goes in seven. See the seven? Right there. This is an alignment. And then right back here there's a cutter. And I cut it. Right? So now just bring this down and it goes right through. Nice. So you can just reach in there and uh, you pulled your thread. Now, thread, I'm going to back up. And you watch the thread come off here. Nice, everything. Beautiful, feels nice. Okay. All right. Vince R. Curie. And I thank you for watching my tutorial and here's some of the nice things you could do 
uh, with the machine. And yeah. And, uh, do stuff like this. That's my wife Louise when she was in her 30s and Nereid is the name of a novel I'm writing. It's a science fiction and uh, she's going to be Nereid in my science fiction. Okay, my friends. All right, that's my little tour. And these are some of my projects. I work with a monitor. See, when I do my videos, <laughs> look at this. And I am not. See, when I do my videos, I work with a monitor. And this way I could, I get nice and close, I can, you know, I could, I can make nice close-ups. How's that? See? Okay, Vince Curie, thank you for watching.